What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Hope you've had a fantastic weekend. So today we're going to be talking about record box and before you click off, it's not a full blown record box tutorial. There are tons of them on YouTube, I'm aware of that. No, we're going to be focusing on using record box in export mode, but with a laptop whilst DJing. Yes, you can use record box in this way. And I'm a little bit unsure why not more DJs are using record box in this way because I've done it for a number of years. It is by far the most convenient way of using record box for me that I found. And still to this day, there aren't many videos on it on YouTube. I don't think I've actually come across any. And still to this day, I get asked by loads of DJs about what software I use because they just haven't seen record box used in the way in which I use it. Without further ado, I'm gonna show you how to do it, some of the benefits and some of the drawbacks. Let's get into it. So when most people think of record box in export mode, they think of analyzing all your songs, a playlist of songs or your library, whatever it may be, and exporting that onto a USB stick ready to be used in a club by putting the USB into a CDJ or similar device which it absolutely does and it does really really well and professional DJs have been doing it for years but a lot of people don't realize that you can also use export mode with a laptop and it's so easy to set up. First and foremost you're going to need one of these which is a USB switch or hub. You don't need anything fancy this cost me under £10 from Amazon. I'll even include a link in the description below if you're interested, but this has served me well over the years. So once your Ethernet hub is plugged in, you then connect the CDJs to the hub using Ethernet cables. The mixer is optional, however, if you're using a 900 or 900 Nexus and it has Ethernet output, then you may as well do this as well. Then continue to plug in your laptop in the same way. Now I use a Mac, so I have to use a USB to Ethernet conversion dongle or Thunderbolt or USB-C with depending on the Mac that you're using. Thanks Apple. Once all connected, open the record box software and you will see in the bottom left hand corner, if you've done this correctly, a link box appear. Simply click on the link box and you will see all of the CDJs and the mixer, if you've connected this as well, appear in a bar at the bottom of the screen. The CDJ numbers correspond to how they are linked in the sequence. So refer back to your CDJ numbers on the players to ensure that you are loading the track onto the right player. It's as easy as that. And then all you need to do when you want to load up a track, simply click on the desired song and then drag it onto the player which you want to play it from. Track functionality in terms of loops, hot cues, everything like that is simply exported from the laptop onto the CDJ or media player that you're using. So there we have it guys, that is how we use Recordbox in export mode with a laptop to DJ with. And it's as easy as that, this is a free feature of Recordbox, it always has been free and to this day remains free even on Recordbox 6. If you're sat there wondering why I don't just export all of my tracks onto a USB, well look, if I was DJing for an hour or two hours at any one time, then absolutely I would do that. But when I'm DJing, like many of you guys, I'm DJing in nightclubs all night, so that could be four to five hours at a time. I'm DJing at events where you have to take requests, change genres quite frequently, and I just find that this is the most flexible option for me. So that's how you use Recordbox in this way, but what about some of the benefits and some of the drawbacks? Well, there are two key benefits in using Recordbox in this way, in my opinion. First and foremost is the load on your laptop is going to be far less. When you use Recordbox in performance mode, Serato, Tractor, and you plug it into either a controller or perhaps you use CDJs in HID mode, essentially you are using that device to control the software. Essentially the controller or CDJ becomes an extension of the DJ software. Much like when you plug in a controller into your PlayStation 4, Xbox One, whatever you use, the controller is, is essentially just controlling the software. 
In export mode, you are exporting the track to the player and all of the looping, all of the hot cues, etc., are exported to the deck, placing minimal load onto the laptop. And therefore, you can use a laptop that's a bit older. I mean, this MacBook Pro that I'm using at the moment is about six years old. It's a bit laggy, it's not very good, but it still runs Rekordbox in export mode absolutely fine. Um, if you're starting out as a DJ and you think, oh God, I can't afford like a 2,000 pound laptop, then you don't need it. You just need a laptop with the amount of storage that you require for all of your, your tunes, basically. The second main benefit of using Rekordbox in this way is going to be taking the emphasis away from the laptop, and I think this is so important. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm absolutely not saying that DJing on a laptop is bad or anything like that, but where I do think there's a bit of a problem is when a DJ literally has their laptop in front of their face all night like this and they could just as well be checking their emails. No one wants to see that in a club, okay? Because you're doing everything on the CDJ, you're using all of the features of the CDJ, so the loops, the hot cues, the, you know, everything. Um, your laptop is literally just basically a big USB stick with a search function. I literally drag and drop the right song and then everything else is in the decks. Um, and yeah, it's fine to use Serato, it's fine to use Rekordbox in performance mode, you know, to one side, but having your laptop so it's facing you like this, um, covering you up all night, just, I, I don't think it's that, that great a look, to be honest. But that is my personal opinion, and this is why I, I stick to Rekordbox in this way. So those are the two main benefits of using this. And also as well, of course, it's free of charge. That's an extra benefit. So it's always been free and to this day remains free. So yeah, it's, it's free software, basically. Okay, so those are the benefits. What about the drawbacks? And there are a couple that I can think of with everything. It's pros and cons, and you need to make up your decision as to if this is going to work for you. So first and foremost is the amount of players that this will work with. Essentially, it will only work with players that have a pro DJ link capability. So that is any player that has an ethernet output. So the CDJ 900, the CDJ 2000, the earliest editions will work as well as the Nexus players, which obviously came out uh, a little bit afterwards. Also as well, it will work with the media players that look like CDJ. So the XDJ 700 and the XDJ 1000, Mark 1 and Mark 2. The only controllers that export mode will work with are the standalone units. So think of the XDJRR, the XDJRX Mark 1 and Mark 2. You can connect to those standalone players using the USB rather than Ethernet because I'm conscious that the RR and the RX2 don't have Ethernet connections, but it works in that way. Controllers like the DDJ400, DDJ800, 1000, etc. It won't work in this way. You have to use performance mode. End of story. The second major drawback is the Ethernet connection. Now, with brand new CDJs or really maintained equipment, this is not going to cause you a problem at all. But in nightclubs where they don't maintain their kit so well, Ethernet, I find, is not the most stable connection and the link or the connection to the link can be intermittent. So I would firmly recommend that when you connect using Ethernet to wiggle the cables around a bit to make sure that there's no intermittent problems. Now, if your connection to the link does drop partway through a song, the player won't shut off. It will go into an emergency loop mode I know that on Denon, it will play the whole track out right because it's got a bigger buffer memory. But yeah, with Pioneer, it goes into emergency loop mode, which means that you have to drop in another track using USB. So um, that is something to bear in mind. Kit that's well maintained, however, you shouldn't have a problem with. So those are, I guess, the two major concerns or drawbacks of using Rekordbox in this way that I have come across personally. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. I hope that was useful and opens, uh, I guess, a greater number of options to you when using Rekordbox. As I say, for me, it's absolutely perfect for those longer sets and it served me well over the years and I found it to be a really robust way of using the software. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As ever, please hit that subscribe button if you think this content is useful. I look forward to hearing your 
thoughts in the comments and I will see you next week.